there's a nifty feature in Filmora that I didn't even know I needed until I found it. It's called planar tracking, and it lets you put a video or an image or a logo or whatever onto another video in any part of a plane, an area. It might be the side of a building, the side of a truck, or anything else in the video. Let me show you. So I've got this video of a laptop and it's in a coffee shop or something and the camera sort of moves around. I want to have this other video, this beach scene, as the video that's playing on that laptop. If I put that beach scene on the timeline on the track above the laptop, well, first of all, it's too big, it covers the entire laptop, we could fix that and scale it up so that it fits better on the laptop screen. That might be okay for a still image, but as we play through and the video has the laptop moving or the camera angle moving so we're seeing the laptop differently, now things have gone off track because our beach video stayed in this perfect rectangle. This is where planar tracking comes in. I'm gonna hide the track with the beach scene on it for now. I'm gonna select the clip with the laptop in it. Over on the right under video and AI tools, we're gonna scroll down until we get to planar tracking. We'll turn that toggle on and we have two options, auto or advanced. I'll show you both, let's start with auto. When I click auto, I get this frame here that's asking me where the plane is that we wanna follow. We can click and drag that around, but then we need to edit each of these four corners. So I'm gonna start with this bottom right and drag it out. You see that circle with the plus sign? That's a magnifying glass so that we can see the point right where that corner is and hopefully line it up a little bit better. We'll put that one right there, get this top right corner, move him into place, bottom left, that looks pretty good. Oh no, we're in a little bit, so we'll just click and drag that back out and do a little fix up on our top left here where we started. Now over on the right, we're not gonna put the beach scene in yet. We'll do that under link element, but first we need to hit this start button and now it's gonna go through frame by frame and figure out where this plane moves as the video moves along. It's trying to figure out where these four corners need to be. All right, now that it thinks it has things figured out, we can play through and see how it did just looking at this green frame and we could find anywhere that it messed up like they're right at the very end. But let's go ahead and add our beach scene in. So I'm gonna unhide this track. Back over to the right, underneath of link element, you have this drop down, which is set at none. We drop that down, we see that beach, which is the name of this clip, beach is now available. You can also import from your computer. Oddly enough, this drop down doesn't let you just select anything from your media panel. It has to either be something on the timeline that's not in use by tracking already or brought in from your computer. So I'm just gonna select beach. This is the very last frame, so let's go back to the beginning. It's resized that beach video and it's keeping it within this track rectangle. As we play through and the camera movement on the laptop video changes, it's also changing now the video of the beach scene within that laptop screen. Now remember we used the auto tracker rather than the advanced, and when you use the auto tracker, making changes to where that frame lines up is not ideal. For instance, right here toward the end, we can see this top right corner has gone out of whack a little bit. I can click that point and drag it into a better position, and that's great. You'll even notice on the clip, we got this little yellow diamond, this little keyframe for the planar tracking. But in auto mode, it only affected that specific frame. So if I play through that little part, you'll see it jitters because it's off course, and in that one frame, we put it back on course just for that one frame. So let's delete the auto tracker and we'll try advanced this time. I'm gonna hide the beach scene again, get it out of our way. I'm gonna bring the playhead back to the beginning with the laptop clip selected under planar tracking, I'll click advanced. It gives us the frame again to set things up. We'll get the four corners of our plane in the right spots here. Now when we're using the advanced tracker, we have more than just a start button over here to look at. First we have the accuracy. You have low, default, and high. We're gonna use high because why not? And then instead of the start button underneath of analyze, you have these four controls. The two that are showing are the track forward and the track to next frame. So it's a frame by frame tracking. The track backward and track to previous frame, those are disabled right now because we've got our playhead at the very beginning of this clip, so it can't go backward any farther. We're gonna click this play button, which is track forward, and it'll go through and start trying to figure out where these four corners need to be frame by frame through the whole video. Now, something that's different about advanced mode is at any point, if you start to see it getting off track, the play button is now a stop button. You can click that, make an adjustment, and then hit the track forward or play button again, and it'll pick up from there 
there, you're sort of resetting it, telling it, hey, no, no, you got a little off. You need to be back to here. I'm not going to make any of those adjustments right now. We're just going to let it play through and do its thing. The higher accuracy setting does take a little bit longer than the low or default accuracy, but that's okay. It's probably worth it. Now, if we play through here or just scrub through by dragging the playhead and we notice that something's off and we want to make an adjustment, you should probably come to the place where it starts to go off track. You know, maybe it was there or something. You can click on this corner, any of these corners, make an adjustment and then start tracking forward. Or you can go frame by frame if you want to be very precise and adjust this one frame at a time. But if you make an adjustment and hit the play button or track forward, it's going to pick up from that point and say, oh, that's where I was supposed to be and try and follow its way out. You can also do this in reverse. You can come to the end of where something went wonky and make adjustments to one of these corners and then track backward or track backward frame by frame if you like. Or you can do a process of going forward and backward until you get it dialed in just right. I'm going to unhide our beach scene here and come over on the right and underneath where we did the accuracy is the link element. You can drop that down. I'll click beach to select it. And it seems to have dropped our beach scene on the laptop screen, which is exactly what we were going for. Now to preview this without this green frame or target box showing, we can just click this eyeball and turn it off and then play through and see how it does. Not too bad. There's a spot here where it's coming outside the left edge a little bit. And yeah, there's a little bit of jiggle there and at the end. Again, we could fix that by just clicking somewhere where that starts to happen. Actually, it looks like I have it off to the left a little bit too much, nearly from the beginning. So in that case, I might want to turn my little box back on. And since it feels like it's going too far left from the beginning, maybe drag this in and just do the tracking over again from the beginning by just clicking the play button over here underneath of analyze. Now it's not showing me the video, even though I do have it linked. It's not showing that beach video in there, but I can see this frame, what it thinks the plane is that it needs to follow and make adjustments based on where this green frame is. It looks like it's doing a pretty good job. I, again, if you want to be super precise, you could be stopping this, making an adjustment, playing forward or going frame by frame. We're not going to spend the time on this, making it perfect. I think you get the idea of what planar tracking is and sort of how to use the controls. But it's not just for putting videos on laptop screens. There's lots of other ways I think you could use this, and I bet there's probably a whole bunch of ways that I haven't even thought of yet. Here I've got this AI generated video clip of a truck going down the road and almost passing by. And I've also got my accelerator name, brand, website, whatever it is there. And I'd like that to be on the side of this truck. So I'm going to make sure that image is the same length as my video clip. I'm going to drag it out to the end. Otherwise, if we put it on there and it only covered half, then halfway through the video of the truck going by, it would just fall off. And we don't want that to happen. I'm going to hide it for now so that it's out of our way while we're setting up our planar tracking. I'll bring the playhead back to the beginning, select the truck clip over under video AI tools, come back down here to planar tracking and toggle that on. Let's just do auto for this one. We get our little target box, our green frame here, drag that down to about there and start working on these corners. Okay. I think that might be where we need to be. So now with the auto tracker, we just have the start button. So we'll click start, let it run through and figure out where all those corners need to move to as the video moves. All right, let's unhide the clip that we want to put on the side of that truck. Then under link element, we'll hit that drop down and select accelerator and well there you go it's on the side of the truck i'm gonna go ahead and click this eyeball and hide the target box and let's see how it did well it's definitely on the truck a little bit of jiggly jiggly there might want to oh yeah at the end we got a little wobbly if i wanted that to be perfect i could go in and make those adjustments frame by frame or if i went into the advanced tracking sort of reset it when it starts to get off track and hit the track forward and let it come into a better more accurate place with less jiggles these are just a couple of things that you can do with planar tracking. You could also put a video playing on the side of that truck. That's pretty cool. You could put a video playing anywhere that you can find a spot that's sort of defined that has four corners. Somebody suggested something I could do with some of my AI video generations that come out um, less than perfect, we might say, that maybe I could use those to be playing on a TV in the background of the scene of another video. And you might be thinking, well, why don't you just generate the video that has the TV with the video playing in the background? I'll just generate that all in one shot. That's great if you can pull it off, but uh, sometimes it's hard enough just to get the scene you want created by an AI video generator, much less having it generate a 
scene uh, the way you want it with a TV screen showing an entirely different scene and all the details the way you want it. So I think that's a pretty cool idea and something I might try. I hope this has given you some ideas of creative things you might try with it. My name is Bob. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope you come back and see me in another video.